Welcome my students to the second part of our lecture today about the uh, Escherichia coli. We discussed the intestinal diseases, intestinal infections caused by E. coli. And now we will pass to the second type of infections caused by E. coli, which is urinary tract infection. E. coli is very important causative agent of urinary tract infection and in the future you will face too many cases of urinary tract infection that's caused by E. coli. 70 to 80 percent of acute urinary tract infections are caused by E. coli. So you can imagine the high number, the high percent of acute urinary tract infections that's caused by E. coli. 40 to 50 percent of chronic urinary tract infections are caused by E. coli. Now the urinary tract infection that is caused by E. coli, it may include lower urinary tract causing urethritis, cystitis, or urethrocystitis, or also it may affect the renal pelvis and kidneys, the upper urinary tract causing pyelonephritis. Now development of these urinary tract infections are further uh, developed by obstructive by the presence of obstructive anomalies or vesicourethral reflux presence of these obstructive anomalies or vesicourethral reflux will increase the chance of having infection with uh, urinary tract infection due to e coli because it will make the movement of urine slow and by this there will be high possibility of urinary tract infection. Vesicourethral reflux is backward movement of urine from the urinary bladder back to the ureter. This is the vesicourethral reflux. Now, the causative agent of urinary tract infection by E. coli is the uropathogenic E. coli. This is the strain that is responsible for urinary tract infection. In E. coli, it is the uropathogenic E. coli. They colonize the vagina and periurethral region, and from these sites, they will ascend up to the bladder or kidney, causing cystitis or pyelonephritis. Now, what are the virulence factors of uropathogenic E. coli that help them to uh, infect the urinary tract? It includes two factors, which is pyelonephritis associated pili, PAP and also by non-fembrial adhesins in FA that produce hemolysis. These are the virulence factors of uropathogenic, uropathogenic E. coli, which is the strain of E. coli responsible for the urinary tract infection. This is about the urinary tract infection that is caused by E. coli, and as I said, it is very important. Third disease, now first of all intestinal infections, second urinary tract infections, three pyogenic infections. E. coli are associated with many pathogenic, many pyogenic infections that occur in the intra-abdominal region such as peritonitis and abscess resulting from spillage of bowel contents. Also, it may cause infections in the perianal area and in neonatal meningitis. So these are infections that may cause may be caused by E. coli. Peritonitis, spillage of bowel contents outside the bowel, perianal area and in neonatal meningitis. So one of the causative agents and of important causative agents of meningitis during the neonatal period is E. coli. Put this in your mind. Sepsis, septicemia. Also, E. coli play a role in this infection. It is responsible for about 15% of all cases of sepsis in hospitals, nosocomial sepsis. It comes in the uh, second place after the Staphylococcus aureus, which causes 20% of sepsis in the hospital. So this is the pyogenic infections caused by E. coli and the sepsis caused by E. coli. 
these are the four most important diseases that may be caused by E. coli it includes intestinal infections by five types urinary tract infections pyogenic infections and sepsis diagnosis of infections caused by E. coli of course first if the specimen first of all the specimen should be taken from the site of infection urinary tract infection we will examine the pulse of the urine pus if there is for example wind infection stool in the intestinal infection cerebrospinal fluid if there is meningitis and so on we will examine it by direct examination and culture and we will discuss this in the practical lab inshallah if the coronavirus give us chance to uh, give the practical lab and you will see how can we diagnose E. coli in the lab also by serotyping as we said for example in hemolytic uremic syndrome the serotyping is O157H7 so serotyping is important to take the pathogenic species in ELISA and immunofluorescence to detect the virotoxin and shigatoxin and by PCR, PCR polymerase chain reaction this is about the diagnosis of infections caused by E. coli now the last point is that uh, some organisms are normally present in the stool and not present in water so for example uh, in uh, swimming pools if we notice that there is contamination with E. coli enterococcus fecalis and clostridium perfringens it means that this water is contaminated with the stool this is all about our lecture today in summary to our lecture today we talk about the Escherichia coli first of all we talk about the introduction including cultural characters biochemical activity serological factors and virulence factors cultural characters we say it is non fastidious and it is lactose fermenters producing rosping colonies or lactose containing media by chemical activities it is inv its invic phenomena is positive positive negative negative it can ferment glucose lactose sucrose and others and it is urease negative serological characters including uh, k o and edge antigens and virulence factors including capsulosis phagocytosis pili for attachment endotoxins in exotoxins including enterotoxins of heat labile heat stable and virotoxin and hemolysis then we talk about the uh, diseases caused by e coli including intestinal infections urinary tract infections pyogenic infections and sepsis for intestinal infections we have five serotypes five strains which is enteropathogenic e coli that cause infant diarrhea and its virulence factor is enteropathogenic adhesion factor that change the morphology of microvilli causing loss of absorption by the intestine leading to diarrhea entero second enterotoxigenic e coli it causes massive watery diarrhea also causes traveler's diarrhea its virulence factors from its name it produces enterotoxins of heat labile heat stable toxins and also by colonizing factor that make them attached to the intestine third strain is entero invasive e coli from its name it causes bloody bloody diarrhea during invasion of the intestinal mucosa fourth is entero hemorrhagic e coli that cause hemorrhagic colitis and complicated by hemolytic uremic syndrome sometimes in five percent of the cases and the virulence factor is by fembria and also by virotoxin which is similar to the uh, shigella toxin and the final strain of E. coli that causes this time infection is, uh, is entero adherent E. coli causing watery or hemorrhagic diarrhea by fimbria and by toxin reproduction. Uh, second disease caused by E. coli is urinary tract infections. We say that E. coli can cause upper or lower urinary tract infection. It is responsible for 70-80% of acute UTI and 40-50% to of chronic UTI. The most strain responsible for E. coli infection of UTI is uropathogenic E. coli its virulence factors is by pyelonephritis associated pili and also by non-febrile adhesins that produce the hemolysin A the final 
uh, two diseases caused by two infections caused by E. coli are pyogenic infections and sepsis. Pyogenic infections like peritonitis, <coughs> neonatal meningitis, and perianal infections and sepsis. Uh, when uh, E. coli is responsible for 15% of nosocomial sepsis. This is all about our lecture today, which is about the E. coli. Thank you very much, my students.